I wanted to see if I could automate virtual machine deployments. I've set a few rules. No pressure. All right, now that we understand the orchestrator client, let's start creating an orchestrator workflow. Now, if I wanted to, uh, I could go to any of these three views, find this workflow, run this workflow, create a virtual machine, and declare victory. I did it. But that, that's too simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a workflow of my own that's going to call this workflow. By the way, this is a technique referred to as wrapping. So my workflow is going to be wrapped around this workflow. There are a variety of things you can do with workflow wrapping, and we'll, we'll be talking about some of them here in a bit, but let's actually start to create my new workflow. So we'll click on new workflow. We'll give my workflow a name. Uh, let's call this one create one VM. So we give it a name. Click Create, and now we're editing the workflow. Uh, on the summary page, we're going to uh, potentially set some other settings here, but for our purposes right now, I'm just going to set a description because I always type in a description for every workflow I ever define. We'll talk more about typing descriptions a bit here, but let's type in a description. All right. My workflow needs to have that flow chart looking thing called the schema. So let's go to the schema tab. And as you can see right now, our schema is very simple. It has a start schema element and an end schema element. Now, there are a whole bunch of other schema elements that we can add here. And by the way, it's not just these generic ones. Uh, there are different categories of schema elements. Uh, but for right now, we should be able to do this in under generic. So under generic, let's go and drag in something called a scriptable task. A scriptable task, as its name suggests, allows you to write some scripting code. That code can be in JavaScript or Node.js or Power CLI or PowerShell or Python. We give you lots of different choices, but I'm going to choose JavaScript in this case. And in our scriptable task, we can write whatever uh, valid legal JavaScript code we want. For example, we could write code here that somehow goes to vCenter and requests the deployment of a virtual machine. But again, one of the things I love about Orchestrator is that I don't have to write code. Um, sometimes you'll need to write code, but oftentimes you don't need to. So let's, let's get rid of this scriptable task. And instead, let's have my workflow. So this is my workflow schema. We're going to have it call somebody else's workflow by dragging in a workflow element. Uh, by the way, you'll notice that there are a total of five different schema elements that allow you to call somebody else's workflow. Um, this first one will work fine for us. Now, let me uh, position this here so it looks pretty. And right now, we don't know which workflow we want to call. So what we're going to do is go over to the Properties section here. So select the workflow, go to Properties, and we're going to search for the workflow that we want our workflow to call. Uh, you'll recall uh, there's one called Create Simple Virtual Machine. So I type in a portion of the name and let's go find that workflow. Let's see, that's Create Data Store, Create Distributed Virtual Switch Port Group. Here we go. Create Simple Virtual Machine. We'll select it. And conceptually, just looking at the, the schema, you can already tell what this workflow is doing. So it, it has a start schema element, then we're going to create a virtual machine, and then we're done. And we didn't have to write any code at all. There is, however, something that we do need to do. You'll notice that this workflow has a number of different inputs that we need to supply. It needs to know the name that we want to call the new virtual machine. It needs to know what operating system we want installed. It needs to know which VM folder we want to install the virtual machine into, and so forth. So we don't have to write any code but we do need to supply these different pieces of information. All right, we've started creating our first orchestrator workflow, but now we need to learn about something called binding. What's binding, you ask? Binding is quite possibly the most important thing you ever have to learn about orchestrator. So join me in the next video and let's learn how to do binding. <laughs>